Hi, my name is Martin Nielsen, and I'm an equine parasitologist here at the Gluck Equine Research Center at the University of Kentucky in the United States. I'm here today to talk to you about an exciting study that we just completed on deworming of horses. And so, you know, when I talk to people like you, I often get the statement that, you know, oh yeah, my horse is up to date on deworming. And honestly, I don't really know what that means all the time. So often when I start asking, so, you know, what do you mean? People start talking about how often they deworm. You know, they would deworm every six weeks or every two months year round or in falls every month. And they would rotate between products. That's very, very common still around the world. And I start saying, you know, that's, that's not necessary. That's way too much. You don't need to deworm this much. And by the way, you're only going to get drug-resistant worms out of it. Uh, we, you know, we recommend deworming much less than that. And so when I start trying to persuade people into deworming less, a lot of people go, oh, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm afraid that my horse will get too many worms and it might, you know, sustain disease or get sick or have clinical health issues. Um, so, you know, I'm not comfortable with deworming less. So we thought we could do a study on this. So instead of just going out to farms and doing our usual parasitology thing where we look for how many parasites are there and are they resistant or not, I mean, those are studies we often do and they're still very useful, but this study was different. In this study, we decided to look at the horses, look at how healthy those horses were, and we divided them into different groups following different deworming protocols, some representing the traditional, typical approaches that a lot of people still use, and others representing what we now recommend. And we were gonna look at the differences in health of these horses. So this study was done in New Zealand. It was done on thoroughbred and standard bred farms. And before you, you turn this video off and go, well, I mean, I don't have that kind of horse. It doesn't apply to me. You know what? The parasites don't care. They don't care about how fancy that horse is, whether it's a racing horse or, or a dressage horse or show jumper or a backyard pony or a gated horse. It doesn't care. It's going to infect them anyway. And these parasites are found all over the world. We find the same parasites and we have the same issues. The only reason for going to these types of farms is that those are the types of farms where you can get large enough numbers to do a good solid scientific study. So stay tuned. So looking at this study, we had mares and we had foals. We followed the foals for two months of age to seven months of age, so up until the time of weaning. And the mares we followed for an entire calendar year starting in December and ending the next December. So looking at the two groups that we had uh, for the foals, one will be familiar to a lot of you, and that's group two, that is the traditional approach to deworming, treating foals every month, rotating between products. A lot of people do that. We advise against it strongly. It is not necessary, and it only drives more resistance. Uh, group one is what we now recommend, targeting large roundworms, the asquid parasites. We recommend deworming at two months of age and five months of age, so only two treatments. The numbers uh, on the very right in this table are the number of dewormings applied in the entire study. So we had 93 folds, we followed them for six months, and these are the, the differences. So look at how, how many more treatments were administered in group two compared to group one. So huge difference there. And we're going to see whether there are any health impacts, differences in health impacts between the two groups. Before that, let's look at the mares. We had three groups of mares. Uh, again, one group was the traditional approach, that's group three. Uh, deworming mares every two months, year-round, rotating between products. That's the typical traditional approach that we see people use in many, many parts of the world still. We advise against it. It is not necessary to deworm that often in adult horses. And by the way, you have so much resistance, and if you keep deworming like that, you're only going to get more. So the two other approaches, groups one and two, are the two alternatives. Group one is a, tr is the, a strategic approach where you deworm twice, spring and fall, uh, and, um, and then you know, have strategic control of what parasites are there. Group two is based on fecal egg counts where you run fecal egg counts from all adult horses and then you deworm those that exceed a threshold. In this case, that was 300 
x per gram, strong jowls. And then again, look at those numbers at the very right. Those are the number, uh, numbers of treatments of dewormings administered in that study over the course of the entire year. Look at group two. I mean, it, those mares almost didn't get dewormed at all. Uh, and compare that to group three. Huge, huge differences. So how did that translate to any of these health parameters? Well, before we look at that, let's do one parasitology nerdy thing here. Let's look at the parasite fecal egg counts. We do always do that, and we do that to monitor what parasites are there, and also how well the treatments actually worked. This is a little complicated to look at. There are three graphs here. The two top ones are the foals. And bottom line there is that we did have differences between the two groups. The more heavily dewormed group had lower ascarid egg counts and lower strongyal fecal egg counts. So difference there in terms of parasite presence, apparently. In the mares, bottom graph, no differences across the entire year between the three groups when it came to strongyal egg counts. So even though we had these vastly, vastly different numbers of treatments administered between the groups, we did not see any difference on fecal egg count levels. That's just food for thought already there. All right, let's look at weight. So we determine weights uh, on all of these animals, and bottom line is foals and mares, no difference. No differences across the groups or between the groups and across the time of the duration of the study. On the mares, we also had body condition scoring. Uh, that's this graph. Again, no difference between the groups when it came to body condition score over the course of that year. Finally, we did the health exams, and uh, we uh, then saw very, very few observations. We had uh, just a few um, nasal discharges. We had a few cases of diarrhea, uh, basically no colleagues, and no differences between groups. So, you know, even though we followed these animals for a long time, we went there repeatedly, and we examined them thoroughly, we struggled finding any health effects of these parasites and nothing that we could ascribe to the treatments between these groups. So what can we learn here? Well, within that time frame of that study, we just didn't see any adverse events that could be ascribed to scaling down that deworming intensity. Um, you know, parasites are not horrible pathogens. They're not lurking around waiting to attack your horse and make them sick or kill them. It is normal for horses to have parasites. Our goal is just to make sure that we keep these parasite burdens under control, that they don't develop into large numbers and high levels where you know, a horse could sustain disease or health impact. And, and that's why we have our recommendations in place for monitoring for parasites, checking the efficacy of the deworm. And it's very important that you make sure that what you deworm with actually works. And so work with your veterinarian about this. You know, live with parasites, horses do it all the time. We just have to come to terms with it as well. You can read more about the study in that summary uh, that is actually linked to here uh, next to this video. And with that, I thank you for your attention and um, wish you good health and happy trails. Thank you.